And now the secant and the cosecant. These graphs are really similar, which is presumably why the textbook author just gives them a single section. And when you look at one of these graphs, it looks really unnatural, or at least maybe I'm projecting my opinions, but I think this is kind of a weird looking graph. What on, where on earth is this coming from? Why does it look the way it looks? Well, the secant, remember, is one divided by the cosine. Let's compare the graph of the secant with the graph of the cosine. Okay, and now you're seeing some relationship between these two. So the secant has vertical asymptotes. Again, because it's one divided by the cosine, so every time the cosine is zero, the secant is not defined. So that explains like this vertical asymptote at pi over two. This vertical asymptote at three pi over two and so on. What happens in between the vertical asymptotes well, the secant is one divided by the cosine. So like look between these vertical asymptotes, the cosine is always negative, which means the secant is always negative. Here, the cosine is negative one. One divided by negative one is also negative one. So the cosine and the secant touch. Usually though, the cosine is less than one. Like here, the cosine is about one, negative one half. Now one divided by a number less than one is greater than one. For example, one divided by a number that's about a half will be about two. Let's see if we can, I cannot locate that point anymore. But the point I'm trying to make is, that because of that, because one divided by a number that's less than one is greater than one, that's why we have these values down here and these values up here. So that's the secant and Here is the cosecant, and the exact same pattern repeats. So let's try to summarize that. Let's look at the secant first, because the secant's more important. That's one divided by the cosine. We've seen that if this is the graph of the cosine, then the secant looks roughly 
like that. Trying to jot down a few properties of the secant. It's periodic, and it shares its period with the cosine. Its period is 2 pi. It has its vertical asymptotes. when the cosine is zero. So pi over two plus or minus integer multiples of pi. Um, these are the same vertical asymptotes that the tangent has because the tangent also has its vertical asymptotes when the cosine is zero. And finally, I feel like I garbled the explanation a bit. So let's try this again. Because the cosine is stuck between a negative one and positive one, the secant is stuck in the interval from negative infinity to negative one, union the interval from positive one to infinity. And that's because when you take a small number and you put it in the denominator of a fraction, it makes the fraction big. And that is the secant. As for the cosecant, one divided by the sine, well, very similar. It has a period of two a pi. The vertical asymptotes are going to be in different places. The vertical asymptotes are going to be at pi and negative pi and two pi and negative two pi, the integer multiples of pi. Again, if you're paying careful attention, this should be a little familiar. These are the same vertical asymptotes that the cotangent has, because the cotangent also has the sign in the denominator. And let's see if I can find the eraser tool. Because the sign is stuck between a negative one and one, that means that the cosecant is in this interval. Again, because the sign is small, the sign stuck between negative one and one, and one divided by a small number, is a large number.